to what happened in Maui. Fire officials say the wildfires are now mostly contained and they're just focused on putting out hot spots and flare ups when it comes to the fire. But there's much more work to be done. As you know, 96 people have died and the governor says the search for missing people is continuing. More rescue and recovery teams are on the ground. But as of this morning, crews have only gotten through about 3% of the land that burned. People are also asking if there were decisions made that made this worse or if the fires could have been prevented altogether. The state's attorney general is saying she's now investigating the decisions made before and during the fires, including a call to not sound the island's emergency warning sirens. Some people are also suing the power company in Hawaii, claimed it didn't cut power when wind knocked power lines over. Now, obviously still too early to know for sure how this all went down. But what we do know is that it's now the deadliest wildfire more than a century in the United States. The last time a fire turned this deadly was in 1918 in the northern part of our state. And Morgan went back in time to revisit that fire, the Cloquet Fire, that happened 104 years ago. Morgan? Yeah, Jana, around 450 people died in that fire. It's a natural disaster that is eerily similar to what we've been seeing in Maui. Six days ago, flames took over paradise. The Maui fires swept through the forest, then towns, showing no mercy to Lahaina, destroying everything in its path, killing nearly 100 people. Now, the most deadly fire since this one, 104 years ago in northern Minnesota. It burned for weeks through Duluth, Moose Lake, and Cloquet. The 1918 Cloquet fire is described as the perfect storm. Dry conditions mixed with the spark from a train that led to devastation. We were building futures, building homes, building towns, building businesses, and, and the fire wiped them out. We met Dan Reed in 2018 during a 100 year anniversary piece on this fire. If the fire decided to kill you, it would. Or if it wanted to let you go, that's what it did. You had no choice over it. 50 years ago, he interviewed surviving victims for a book. I listened to them talk and, and if they would have made one wrong move, you know, the the fire would have got him. To escape the flames, people tried to drive away. They tried to hide in cellars. The fire found them. Some survived by jumping into lakes, similar to people jumping into the ocean in Maui. When the fire was over, a lot of people decided to leave because their businesses, their homes, everything was gone. And uh, Lahaina is the same situation. Uh, I always think of uh, my grandmother's line, we came here to live, not to die. The Cloquet Fire burned 38 communities and 250,000 acres. Another similarity that it shares with the Maui fires is that wind fueled it. Wind spread and it was clocking about 60 to 70 miles per hour. Morgan, I don't know if you had the chance to talk to them about this, but how do you even fight fires that big over 100 years ago around here? Oh my, I think that was part of the really big challenge too. And the fact that there was so much, you know, dry weather that they were experiencing and then trains and they also, you know, didn't have the best regulation back then. Yeah. So a lot of our fire safety that we have nowadays can prevent a ton of this from happening. All right. Thanks so much, Morgan. We appreciate it. Well, back to what happened in Maui. If you still have been waiting and you want to help out, you still can. You can text Red Cross to 90999, and that will automatically make it pretty simply. simple. It will give a $10 donation. There's also other organizations that have been doing work on the island for a long time that you can send your money to, like the Maui Strong Fund, the Maui Food Bank, or the Maui Humane Society.